even as allies fighting together to end World War II. There was an underlying mistrust between the United States and the Soviet Union. When the Big Three met for the Potsdam Conference in July 1945, President Harry S. Truman was particularly suspicious of Joseph Stalin's intentions. And as proof that the feeling was mutual, weeks later, and just days before the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, the Soviets bugged the residence of W. Averill Harriman, the U.S. ambassador to the USSR. They concealed a listening device inside a carving of the Great Seal, which was presented to Harriman as a gift. For years, the Soviets listened in on conversations, undetected, until 1952, when it was accidentally discovered by a British radio operator. The U.S. was informed, and a security sweep confirmed its existence. But rather than go public, it was kept quiet. The CIA and Britain's MI5 decided to analyze the device and then replicate it for use in their own espionage endeavors. The world was never supposed to hear about the great seal bug, but then, eight years later, a diplomatic crisis would pull it out from under its shroud of secrecy. On May 1st, 1960, the Soviets shot down an American U-2 spy plane and captured its pilot, Francis Gary Powers. On display in Moscow, the wreckage of pilot Francis Powers' U-2 reconnaissance plane for Muscovites and foreign newsmen to see as the Soviet launches its most belligerent anti-American propaganda barrage in recent years. The spy plane incident on the eve of the summit was seized upon by the Kremlin and blown up to proportions that startled and shocked the outside world. President Dwight D. Eisenhower tried to deny that it was a spy mission, but the evidence was overwhelming. The incident further strained U.S. and Soviet relations at a time when there appeared to be glimmers of progress. Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev abandoned talks at a summit meeting with other world powers and later convened a UN Security Council meeting to further denounce American acts of espionage. It went on for four days, and on the final day, May 26th, 1960, the Great Seal Bug reappeared. At the United Nations, the Security Council debate on Soviet charges of American aggression ends with a sharp final clash between Gromyko and Lodge. Ambassador Lodge counters repeated denials of Soviet spy activities with a concrete and dramatic example. He tells how the Soviet planted a listening device in America's Moscow Embassy, concealed inside a wooden carving of the Great Seal, presented as a gift by the Russians. <laughs> And here is the, uh, here is the clandestine listening device. Uh, you can see the, the antenna in the area, and it was right under the beak of the eagle. I, I might add that it's really quite an interesting device. For weeks, the Soviets whipped up a furor, rebuked the U.S. for being so audacious but Lodge wanted to prove that what the Americans were doing was no different than what the Soviets were doing. If it should ever be accepted that the Soviet Union can maintain a double standard whereby they have thousands of spies and subversive agents everywhere while protesting one single harmless observation flight, the free world would surely be in great and peculiar danger. Lodge's exhibition would not undo any animosity, but it did pull the curtain back on the reality of the times. The world's two leading superpowers, each spying on the other, waiting and watching to see who flinches first. <laughs> 